guided spiritual path. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses for us certain things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives and he is the one who can prevent someone from receiving. So everything is from Allah. When Allah gave prophethood, he chose those whom he intended to give prophethood very carefully with the best amongst them being Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we need to know that from among the people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had chosen them to go through test upon test. If you think that you have had issues in your life or you have had problems or difficulty or calamity or hardship in your life, you need to simply go through the lives of those whom Allah chose being higher than you and I in rank. And those are the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon them. Remember the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the prophets of Allah are the ones who are tested the most. And after that, those who are closest to them, and then those who are closer and so on. So if you're having a lot of challenges, but you're a believer, trust me, it's a good sign. Inna Allah idha ahabba abdan ibtalah. When Allah loves his slave, he tests him. It's supposed to bring you closer to Allah. It's supposed to bring you closer in a way that your heart is softened. You become a better person. You become more conscious of your obligations. And you become a person who knows, subhanallah, that I'm supposed to be abstaining from sin. And whenever, wherever I falter, I should be seeking the forgiveness of Allah with hope in the mercy of Allah. This evening we read verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of the dua of Zakaria alayhi salam. He did not have male offspring and he wanted male offspring. He was quite advanced in age and he made a dua. Rabbi habli min ladunka dhurriyata Now many of us sometimes we are married and we don't have children. And a long time passes and we start thinking to ourselves that perhaps Allah is upset with me. I'm calling out to Allah, but he's not answering me. That type of thinking is not supposed to be coming from a believer. We should know when Allah has decreed something, it is the best for us. What's the point of having children who will be disobedient to Allah? What's the point of having children who will create a disaster for you in your life by being the biggest embarrassment? What's the point of having children who will quit the deen and who might fight you as a parent, yet you made so much dua to have those children? So Allah knows what is better for you and he knows when it is better for you. Zakaria alayhi salam made a dua. Allah responded it against all odds. There was a miracle that happened. If Allah created a miracle for him, he can create a miracle for you and I. How many from amongst us have had children after eight years, 10 years, 14 years? I've known of a case even 20 years later and they were blessed with a child. That's from Allah. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. So he says to Allah, Oh Allah, grant me from you a pious offspring, a good offspring. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him the offspring. But I want to speak about something else that is extremely important when it comes to his story and the story that followed of Maryam alayhi salam, the mother of Jesus, may peace be upon him, Mary, may peace be upon her too. When she found herself expecting this child who was Jesus, Isa alayhi salatu was salam, she didn't know what to say. She didn't know what to tell the people. It's a problem and it's a big problem. It's not a small issue. It's a major issue. My brothers and sisters, what did she do? She asked Allah's guidance. And what did Allah do? Allah told her, we will solve the matter. For as long as you bear patience and for as long as you are steadfast, you don't need to worry. We will take care of this issue. We will clear your name. People began to accuse her. And they said, she is carrying a child out of wedlock, etc., etc. Whatever the accusations were, they enjoyed the moment, but they were wrong. Protect yourselves from false accusation. 
Don't accuse people. They might be close to Allah and you may not know how you may be punished because of an accusation. What did you gain by accusing someone? What did you gain by spreading a false tale about someone? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Maryam alayha salatu wa salam, be quiet, be silent. Ayatuka alla tu kalliman nasa thalathata ayyamin illa ramza. Your sign is that you don't speak to people for three days, except through some signs. Point to the child. The child will speak on his own, etc. Look at how silence is golden. Look at how silence has come to the rescue of a person who was innocent. Sometimes my brothers and sisters, the accusations against you might be so huge that only Allah can clear your name. Don't worry. Bear patience. Take it in your stride. Don't lose hope. A day will come when you will be smiling all the way. Allah will clear your name. La ilaha illallah. The worst scenario, we will arrive on the day of judgment and see the reward of the patience that we bore. So choose which side you want to be on. Do you want to be on the side of those who accuse others or of those who are patient because of an accusation that was leveled against them? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us steadfastness. In these verses, in many places, Allah shows his miracles. And Allah shows how he sent the angels during the time of Badr. وَلَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرُ وَأَنْتُمْ أَذِلَّهُ Remember at the time of Badr, when you were small in number, Allah helped you with the angels. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I send you 3,000 angels. But if you bear sabr and taqwa, I will send you another two to make it 5,000 angels. Which means, there are two things I need in order to achieve the assistance of Allah. What are they? Sabr and Taqwa. I should bear patience and I should be conscious of my maker. Be a good person. Be kind to others. Reach out to people. They are all the creatures of Allah. Everyone who is seated here today, for example, it was designed by Allah that you were supposed to be here. So remember those sitting next to you are maybe for you coincidental, but for Allah, never a coincidence. It was planned by Allah before you knew it. So it's just a test. What are you going to do? You're going to greet, you're not going to greet, you're going to behave yourself, you're not going to behave yourself. All of that is part of the plan of Allah. Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, after talking about sabr and taqwa, you know, we are human beings. We make mistakes, we falter, we might commit sin. There may be immorality that we have engaged in, whatever it may be. It may have been adultery, it may have been fornication, it may have been whatever else it might have been. Maybe our dress code, maybe the way we spoke, something immoral, maybe what we were looking at, maybe what we were listening to. What goes into my mouth in terms of food, what goes into my ears in terms of sound. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. The same applies to our eyes. Do you know we're not supposed to be looking at things that are displeasing to Allah? May Allah strengthen us. So Allah says you might fall into immorality. You will always have a reminder here and there. Turn back to Allah as soon as you remember. So listen to the hope. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يُصِرُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ أُولَئِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً الله أكبر Allah says, those who have wronged themselves, committed sins of immorality, those who have transgressed against themselves or committed immorality, they wronged themselves. They remembered Allah and they sought forgiveness for their sin and they promised not to do it again. Allah says, those are the ones whom we will forgive. And for them, we have prepared paradise. Who is Jannah for? There is no one perfect amongst us right now. So does that mean none of us are going to go to Jannah? No, in fact, Jannah was created for you and I. We are sinners, yes, but we are repenters. That's the difference. We repent. 
the all human beings err, uh, they falter, they sin. But the best of those who are sinners are those who constantly repent. At-tawabun, not just those who repent once, but those who repent all the time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us from the hope that He has kept. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us Jannatul Firdaus. So I want to end off by saying, my brothers, my sisters, the tranquility we find in the house of Allah. There shall be unmatched tranquility in the paradise of Allah. And we will achieve it. It's not too far. Try. Try hard. When you falter, come back. Repent. Shaitan does not want you to come back. Come back. Repent. Earn the forgiveness of Allah. And for you is Jannah. Jannah was prepared for sinners who repent to Allah. That's what paradise is for. So don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah.